first item. Let me ask a question, Sue, or, yes, or anybody. Sir. Do you know if, if Jim is planning to be? I here? thought he was. We I, had he was. Him. He was going to be Palmer. We knew he was going down there. I did. I did. Yeah. He was coming okay. Here. Okay. But he will be here. Yeah. I thought he was going to be at the end. Okay. That's okay. We, we can move on then. Okay. First item on the agenda is public comments. Do we have anybody that would like to speak to the board? I see we have some visitors here. But would you like? Are you want to speak to the board? This is the time to do it. Me? Yes. If you just would give your name, please. Sure. My name is Tanya Mayer. I'm here because I'm trying to get my daughter bust. We can't. From from we have, Willow Road. Could, could I, she's passing out documents, which we couldn't allow that to be happening. Here, I hate to stop right, well, this, whatever. but we can give them to the chair, but we cannot accept those. Well, whatever. Yeah, go ahead. just read, read it through. Yeah. Well, we live on Willow Road. I'm sure that everybody knows where Willow Road is, right across from the school. My daughter is 11, and I will not allow her to walk from the school home. And I've called several people, the superintendent, which never called me back, mm. called the bus garage, which laughed at me. I've called Mr. Pendrick, I don't even know who these people are. I know one person in this room, that's it. And spoke to him, I spoke to the principal, and I spoke to Aileen's teacher. And everybody's told me that she cannot be bused from here to home. I'm looking for her to be bused just to home. I can get her to school. I can't get her picked up right now as it is. My husband's job has told him that he can work different hours for the time being so we can try to straighten this out to get her bused. If not, I guess my only option is to homeschool her. Aileen has asthma. She's been hospitalized for it. She currently takes medicine. Hewitt Road is very dangerous. There's no sidewalks. The snow plowing, when it comes up through, how do I know that she's not gonna be plowed over? There's no place for her to go, except for over the embankment on both sides. And when they do plow, there's gonna be no place for her to walk except for down the road, and I am not allowing my 11-year-old to walk home from school. There's nothing more important to me in this world than my two kids. I can't answer the question. As you probably know, we have a bus contract uh, with Do4. Uh, the two people that are generally responsible for that are the business manager and the manager of the of the bus company. I'm not sure of the reasons uh, for it. This is not the proper place to discuss them. What I can tell you is that someone will be back in touch with you. Rick, can you give me time? It'll be before the end of the day on Friday. It'll be before the end of the day on Friday that we'll be in touch with you to let you know what the situation, exactly what the situation is. If if, um, if you cannot resolve the situation with the individuals that I've talked to, um, you certainly are entitled to come back back to the board. But at this point, the board just doesn't know enough of the situations that are in the policies and things or the procedures and things to control that. So uh, Mr. Pembroke or somebody else will be in touch with you by Friday or by the end of Friday to let you know what the situation is. And, and can I ask who you are? I'm Tim who are Holbrook. You? You're who? Tim Holbrook. You're Tim Holbrook? Right. And, and you you're? Chair of the board. Chair of the board here, of the MAU board. And you can, um, you can get uh, my phone number from Tim or Sue or anybody else. If you'd like to write it down afterwards, I'm more than happy to uh, talk to you on the phone. Well, I don't know. I just hope that this is resolved and that I don't have to pull her from school for this, but I certainly will do that if need be because I will not allow her to walk. I understand. He will, somebody will be in touch with you 
And uh, if there are any, once again, if there are any concerns you have after that, you can give me a call and we can see what to yeah, do at that I point. hope that they do call me back. I'm sure they will. I have great. I've heard that. Well, Thanks. thank Thanks you. Do we have any other comments? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, if you wouldn't mind just identifying yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Pete Levin. I live in Shaftesbury, and I'm here uh, basically a uh, small town. Hear a lot of complaints about the athletic department, and I can only go with my my two experiences with my two children, uh, and they're not good ones. Uh, my first, my son James, when he was a sophomore, had a uh, training infraction, um, and he took his punishment, which was a quarter of the season, and then he came back, and uh, he wasn't allowed to do anything for months and uh, they played in Hoosick Falls on a Saturday night and he wanted to go to a girl's house. So I told him, you know, you're on thin, thin ice, but you can go. So about 11 o'clock I get a phone call from John Bean, Bennington Police, and I, I said, what, what happened? He goes, nothing, nothing bad. He goes, I'm just, uh, he didn't do anything wrong. He goes, I'm calling to make sure he's got a ride home. So when I got there, I found out what had happened. They had got back to the high school, they took a shower, him and two friends, and they went to this uh, house and they walked in and uh, it was a full-blown party. Um, John Bean said, you know, he was there, he was waiting for his backup and uh, he saw James and his two friends walk in and he goes, my backup came, he goes, they weren't in the house two minutes, they're on their way out of the house. And uh, he goes, I stopped him, checked him, and I called you to make sure, you know, they had a ride home. So Monday, I go down and pick him up at practice. I go, where's James? One of the kids goes, well, he's gone. Tim Brown kicked him off the team. I'm like, what are you talking about? Just at that time, Tim came through the door. I was very upset. We went into the office, and he said, it's uh, another training infraction. I go, how can it be a training infraction? They, you know, they went into the house. They weren't there two minutes, and uh, they, they're leaving. They're doing the right thing, what you teach them to do. Tim goes, they can't even be around it. And I said, well, how the hell do, can they know they're around it if they don't go in and see it. And uh, so he said, well, he's off the team for the year. So I said, well, well what's, what's going on with the other two guys? One game. Not a quarter, a quarter of the season like it should have been. They get one game. So there's the double standard. We had a meeting with Mrs. McGuire, Mr. Barrio, Tim. I think the coach was there. And they wouldn't budge off it, you know. And that's wrong. And that's, there's a lot of it going on over there. And maybe by me speaking tonight, more of it will come out. But I'm sick of the double standards over there. Also, with the girls' uh, uh, basketball program, we have a small group of parents that are troublemakers. They've gotten two coaches fired. They'll say the second one resigned, but they, uh, they weren't very nice to her. And uh, she was a young coach. She basically, I, I say she got fired. But they... Uh, um, they hired Brian Harrington, who had come up with my daughter from seventh grade, eighth grade, and ninth grade, was her coach. And I believe my daughter was probably the leading scorer and leading rebounder all three years. And um, not only that, she, uh, Brian was her um, math teacher. They did a lot of things together. He, she used to go up and walk his dogs between you know school and practice. They had a really good, really good relationship. So. Um, they hired Brian, which I thought was kind of a mistake. I thought they should have stepped outside and got somebody totally new because, I mean, this has been festering for five, six years now. And uh, so, of course, come to find out, Brian's been fraternizing with this group of parents. So they had their team meeting at the beginning of the year. So instead of, you know, inviting everybody to try out, Brian invited certain ones to try out. So I texted him because I said, what happened to Hannah's invitation to try out? Did it get lost in the mail? So he called me, and the first thing out of his mouth was, well, I heard she was going to Grace Christian School, which, even if she was, what would that matter? Because they play here anyway. And then um, he's like, well, she hadn't been you know, to a lot of the, uh, or the open gyms. I go, well, they haven't really technically started, but she'll be there. So she started going, and... She said, she came out of the car one night, or to the car one night, she was just about crying. She said, Brian's not even talking to me. And I'm like, well, he's got a lot on his mind. This is before I knew he was, you know, in with this other crowd. And uh, so 
uh, I said he's got a lot out of his mind. He's got to you know clean up this mess. And uh, so a couple nights later, another one of her friends came out. I told her to get in the car because it was cold. And she came, got in the car, and her family is very strict. And she came in and she said some things not very nice about Brian. And I'm like, whoa, wait, what's what's going on? He goes, he doesn't even talk to us. I'm like, you know, I, I found it hard to believe. But then when we got two kids saying it, so. Um, he didn't say anything to these girls all the way through open gym, all the way through tryouts. He did ask my daughter, when he asked my daughter to try out after Tim Brown told him, you know, I guess he couldn't, you know, just pick certain ones to try out. Um, when he did ask my daughter and another girl to try out, he said, you guys can try out, but you're only going to use motiv as motivation for the other girls. So that tells me he's already got the team picked. And, uh, I mean, one of the girls that made it, I mean, we played their team, scrimmaged them in the summer. She couldn't even get the ball over half court. Our coach had to say, hey, back off, let her get it over half court. She makes a team, my daughter doesn't. But anyway, um, you know, he doesn't say anything all the way through. The last night, the night of cuts, he comes up to my daughter and says, you know, I'm in a bad jam. Would you mind going down to JV's? And she's a nice kid. She, she did. And... You know, it was a lost year. You know, top it off. You know, my daughter, she likes helping other kids. Rick's uh, niece is in the same boat. She's a sophomore. They're nice kids. They helped. They helped out the freshman girls who were kind of a step behind them. Our girls played a tough AAU schedule, and uh, they helped the younger kids. And at the banquet, I didn't go because I, it wasn't a place for me. But. They got up there, and when they were talking to the JV girls, they were told, telling them how bad they were and how they, uh, they didn't treat the other girls right. And I mean, this is how they treated them at a banquet. I think they should be you know, kicked right out of there. I think we need to clean house okay. and, and get some new perspective here. Because believe me, I'm not the only one that feels this way. Very good. I, I don't really know how to answer your concerns. I, I certainly hear what you're saying. Um, but not having all the facts in front of me, not that I'm doubting what you've said, but often uh, people see things in different ways, the, the same thing. What, um, and I, from what you said earlier, I gather that you had met with Sue and with Tim and uh, with other administrators. And, and Mr. Colkeen, right? And Mr. Colkeen, was he there? Mr. Colkeen. I have this year. Yeah. The, the superintendent. Yeah. yeah. Um, my suggestion uh, would be that I speak with, with the superintendent. I already have. Well, I'm just going to tell you what I think I should do. Uh, that I speak with the superintendent, let him know as much as I can uh, your concerns, uh, and see if we, can, if we can come up with an informational session that would um, allow you to ex express your concerns again and also and also give uh, give Tim and, and the other administrators a chance well, Tim, Tim to knows express about those. it and uh, right. talk to Mr. But, Polkeen. Right. I, I just, you know, it's not the board's position to overrule something that the... Well, somebody's got to do something. This is well, that's on. what I'm trying to work out now. And I think the best way to do it is for the board to become more informed about the situation. Well, that's what I was told by a former board member. You don't hear a lot that goes on because that's right. the administration and likes to sweep it under the rug. Well, uh, I, I don't know about that. But uh, one, thing that, one thing that I think is important is that when the board hears something, that we have the principals on the other side of the argument here to explain their um, Believe their, me, I have no position. problem with that. Okay, so what, what, what I will do, and I'm not, I'm not trying to put you off at all, and I'm only sorry that Jim isn't here. Being a superintendent, he was, should be the one that coordinates this thing. But I think it's the board's responsibility to become fully informed of the situation so that they then can at least exert their influence uh, depending upon which, which way it should go. Well, we, will, we will do that. The situation with my son, which happened a couple years ago, I mean, the facts are pretty well straightforward. I mean, you got three kids that went into a party. My son gets punished, the other two didn't. Of course, one did a lot of refereeing for Tim, and the other one, his parent was a, a teacher at the high school. So, you know. I, I, I understand your concerns, but I think that so that the board can better understand the situation, that we, that the only 
way that makes sense to me is to be able to have a meeting where we can at least hear what the administration has to say on these issues. So we will do that, and I will certainly be back in touch with you. Uh, would you, do we know, well, Sue, you know who you are. I'll be in touch with you for sure to let you know how this comes out. But I'm going to wait to talk to well, you. Well, I hope it's not the status quo. They will well, we, we certainly will do you know, something about it. it. It's funny, I, I wrote Brian, the coach, a letter the night before the tryout started last year. And, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, well, I guess I can't hand things out, but. Uh, <laughs> you can always send them to me, and I can distribute them to the board at another time. I will be in, I'll be in touch with you, with, with you though. Okay, thank you. That's okay. I, mean, I will take one to get here. It just doesn't Jim is here. Thank you. Just make sure that Jim gets in. But in here, you know, it says, you know, Tim does, toward the end, uh, Tim Brown raised his hand. Can we at least try to get through the first week of the trial before making judgments? The judgment was already made up when the guy. I understand. Yes, you try out, you try out, you try out. Oh, you can try out, but you're only going to use the motivation. Sure. Uh, I, I understand. All right, we will be in touch with you for sure. Thank you. Here comes Mr. Polkin right now. Okay. Well, rather than go over it all again, we'll meet with him and, and, and follow through on it. Okay, we can move on. Are there any other public comments? If not, we'll move on to the finance. We have a treasurer's report, which was included. Do we have a motion to accept so it? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> we have a budget status report. In terms of finance, Rick has asked that <coughs> the board give him some direction as to um, the parameters within which he will establish a budget. So we will have a finance committee meeting in the very near future uh, when we can meet and discuss what kind of direction we can give the administration in terms of drawing up that budget. So uh, I'll put that together and get a notice, notice out to you, um, letting you know exactly how that, how that works. Rick, do you want to add anything to that? Um, I just want to add, um, in the budget status report, I was asked a question <coughs> in your curriculum meeting, and I gave you an off-the-cuff number of half a million dollars. If you look in the budget status report on page eight, the bottom of the 1400 function, it's about halfway down, it's athletics. Um, that's the middle school at 161,000. And the high school is on page 23 at 475. So I was a little low, but um, it's in the neighborhood of 600. And $13,000 area. Ted, does that help you? Yeah. Good. It came up because we see, for two reasons. I've had people, members of the public, ask me, how much are we spending? Sure. They, it's, it's a big category, so we have to be sure that yeah. when, they, when they hear a figure like that, that they realize how many kids that involves and yeah. what opportunities it gives them. Okay, we can move on then to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to accept it? So move. And a second. Second. Any discussion on it? I have a couple of questions on the warrants. Okay, that would be for Rick. Uh, or the administrators. We've repeating charges for a sheriff at school dances. Is that just a, a standard practice, or do yeah, we actually? We've only had one dance, so. Or do we need? It might be. Is it yours? It, it could have been the middle school. Yeah. Yep. Is that absolutely necessary, or is it just a standard procedure? Uh, that's a precedent that's been in place since I've been in the building, before I came to the building. Um, and it, it's based on, you know, previous need. I mean, there were incidents before my time that required law enforcement. So at this point, it's standard practice to have a, an officer at the dance. We do the same. And we have, we have eight dances a year. The high school has. Well, we just had one, and we're going to have another one in January in the proms. Yeah. I just wondered if it was an absolute necessity, or maybe we should reassess. I think it's important. The routine. Make sure everybody's safe. Okay. I also noticed 
a few charges for AT&T cell phones and they're not a large charge but it's like $80 a month and I thought I'd point out to the board that I had AT&T service and I really got tired of their $80 a month charges and I looked around and I discovered that Consumer Cellular uses AT&T phones and they use the AT&T network so anywhere you've got an AT&T coverage you have coverage with them and their charges are like one third of what you pay AT&T for the same coverage so maybe we should look at it. Yeah. I don't know who's, I mean I have my own service so I'm yeah. not sure who has cell phones. Do you know that Rick? Um, it might be a couple of the techies. Yeah. Oh, it might be the because tech department. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's no, none of the administration. Well, right. it, it's a point to look at. But I can get, I can, yeah. I can get the details and it, get it it's back. It's not a large charge, but you know, if you save two hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. year after year after year, then it yeah. eventually it becomes real money. One more question: the Center for Restorative Justice. Yeah. Why? What are we? paying them for? Um, we do, um, if a student's, it's to avoid a student being charged with something if they don't have a previous charge. In other words, they, it, they work to uh, rehabilitate students and we have a partnership with them. We use it every year. We might have a kid that's, uh, um, it has to do with vandalism or has to do with uh, stealing. So, but they have never done anything like that before. We will work with CRJ, which is the old diversion. Right. Okay, and we'll, they'll work through it, and Dave Burial's actually on the board, and so it's a, a relationship we have to try to help kids. So I don't understand why we're paying for that. Because we, they actually ass will assign a person to the student. Okay, that explains. And it's a little yeah. different. They do it also in the middle school, but it's a little different. At the different. middle school, they, what, they, what they provide for us is a, a program called the CHAOS program. We use it a lot for early intervention for kids with high absenteeism. Okay. And it, again, like Sue said, it's a diversion plan so that you don't end up having to file papers in the court to get a judge to help you get a kid out of school on time. Okay, thank so you. It's an intermediate step for us. Dave, would you? Eddie, you through. Yeah. Hey, would you like to just um, explain briefly what the education committee recommended to the board? Hmm. Yep. The, uh, the ed committee uh, met earlier this evening and reviewed uh, two new teacher positions that have been proposed at. Not positions. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Course, cor courses, classes. classes that have been Not proposed positions. at the high school. Uh, one was we we addressed last month. Um, you just reviewed that. That was the bioethics. Bioethics. And um, service learning. This, the, se the second was a new uh, long block course in service learning. The committee uh, felt that they would like to recommend that the full board approve both. Right. We had one other of these coaches thing as part of this consent agenda. Winter coaches. We right. We also looked at the the, the ed committee did look at the list of winter coaches that's been nominated and um, uh, reviewed that. And, would like to recommend that as well. Leon had one one um, point that he'd like to bring up. Well, I, either we remove it from the Senate agenda or it needs to be adjusted uh, on here. And as uh, item uh, on the on the resonations on the consent agenda, there is item B that has some information in that. that I, I think that the board would, would not want to approve in this manner which says release of contract pending approval of an SBC G hiring approval. We can't, as far as I know, we can't do that in that manner. Uh, and, and that opens a worm, can of worms back to the board for anybody out here, as far as I'm concerned, that want to leave and say, I'm going to wait until something else happened before you go ahead and do that. If not, I want to come back. And so uh, that's not what we want to do as a board. Um, I don't know uh, that, that I've ever seen it written like this ever before. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't know that it ever taken place this way. 
Uh, okay. And, and and there's rationale behind it because you can't be on the contract behind, with two right. two districts in the state of Vermont at the same time. Somebody has to take a chance somewhere and do something without the other. It's usually vice versa. It's usually the the hiring board hires subject to release of the previous con or existing mm -hmm. contract. But it's my the same understanding way. is that she was hired. No. She no. was Monday night. My understanding is no, they, it was not. No. All right, you're right, Leon. They they said they want this meeting to happen, and then they're going to hire. Her. Right. Let but me now, suggest: is is there is there a, is, there a t is there a critical time period on this? Yes, because it's supposed to start December first. Can, right. can I amend the motion to strike, replace of contract pending approval of SVC DC hire approval, and in the motion. So it'll be amended that that's struck. Okay, let, let's right. just be sure everybody understands that. Would you do that again, Nelson? The motion is is to amend the motion that the piece that Leon's talking about, which basically says, replace of contract pending approval of SBC DC higher approval would be stricken. Very so good. You're, you're just releasing her. Just contract. releasing her. That's releasing right, her without account. that. Yep. Very good. So, do so we, so have, do we, who, we have to approve the, the amendment? Initially. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, now we can ask for approval of the consent agenda. As amended. As, As amended. amended. It's on the uh, uh, resignation B. All, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 4B, Richard. Okay, I, I know. I'm still back on the committee. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you. <laughs> He's got his tape recorder going. Okay, we can move Thank on. You. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. Uh, we can move on to administrative reports. Uh, Sue? Okay. Yep. Sorry, sorry. I need just this one, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, just very quickly. Nice pen. Could it? Could it trade it? Excuse me, so that's okay. Thank you. I'm passing out um, two things. One is an article that was in the banner, um, and one is every year I do a uh, document. Of uh, we call students one year after they've been in college, and we find out are they still in college? Are they still in the same college, or have they transferred? And so I have uh, this year's data on there, um, and I compared. I put to the right. I put last year's data so you could make a comparison. One of the most significant things um, that I see is last year we had. Uh, a year later had 16% of uh, the kids that went to college had discontinued stop. This year we only had 3% uh, that discontinued going to college. Um, we had 14% that had uh, transferred, 82% had stayed in the same college, 1% completed a one-year program, 57% went to college. Now as far as um, this year, I was asking just this week, 40% of our seniors have applied early action already this year. That's a nice percentage. And I was just mm -hmm. talking, Morgan has too. She's also part of that group. Um, the other part of this is uh, this article talks about Act 77, which is a Flexible Pathways Act, which allows students to uh, do dual enrollment, which means they can be at a college taking a class and also earning credit at the uh, high school. And um, it, there's also a new program called Early College. And those are, we have six seniors right now that are doing their entire senior year at a college um, in the area, and they'll earn a whole year of credit. Uh, while they're still in high school, and that's called the Early College Program. Right now we have um, 30 kids already have taken this year uh, a college class for this semester. 
16 are in a course, an additional 16 are in a course called Intro Introduction to College Studies, uh, which is a free class. And because of this new Act uh, 77, each student can get two free vouchers to use in their junior or senior year to take college classes in the area. And a lot of our students are taking advantage of this. So I just wanted to let you know um, some of this information. <coughs> you can take it and look it over. And I don't know if you have any questions. Yeah, so how many colleges uh, had showed up on the, on the campus and interviewed students and, and talked to students about going um, to college? You know, there's announcements. I'd have to about find what? out. I really don't know. I, w I can find that out very easily because we haven't pretty much continuously, They're, they'll make announcements saying these colleges are here this week, come on down, and we give the kids passes and they come down. And then we have, don't forget, we have college, uh, Right. we have actually college day where we have uh, schools from all over actually come to that because we have so many colleges there represented. Right. I, you know, it, it would be interesting to, to know a little bit I more. I can tell you next. Well, that's fine, but also maybe at the next meeting you tell us how the guidance counselors or teachers or something what they actually do to encourage students to apply to some of these uh, colleges and also what they do to make them aware of financial opportunities to be able to... Tonight we have uh, Paying for College Night going on right now. Okay, well that's great. And yeah. we have VZAC down. So we offer a lot of different uh, evenings where kids can take the opportunity to come. Correct, Morgan? Do I yep. have it right? Good. So, Tim, did you have something? I, Sue never praises praises her staff, but also reflects on the school as a whole that this is really unique in a high school that does this kind of research one year into the college experience, and an 82% staying in the same college. That number is amazingly high when you start talking about college readiness, and it really should pr it reflects very well on on Anthony and Sue as a principal. I'm just uh, you know, I was at Mount Greylock. I've been in another area, it's, and one know. of the unique schools that's doing this kind of research. It's really quite an amazing. Yeah. I really can't find any other high school that's doing this research. I called the state to try to sure. make comparisons. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it takes it does take a lot of work to do it. But right. I just is Sue. So would you like to mention the award that the football team? Are you aware of that? Yeah, it was a. Uh, uh, I can't think of the name of it, but it was a sportsmanship award. Right. That is kind of an elite award um, that was awarded to our football team this year. Yeah. Yes, and I, I, I don't know the award. Maybe Leon knows something about it. But it, Tim was, was uh, uh, in great praise of the football team yeah. and the coach and everybody and else the for coach, doing such John a good Martin. job. It's a yes. real pat in the back to, yep. to everybody involved in that program yep. to be a recipient of this award. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I come in on that. Every year, uh, the Vermont uh, Football Association in the South and in the North uh, we rate as we do official if we do gangs in the different schools we rate the coaches the uh, the fans the players and all those things and then at the end of the year we come together to uh, select mm -hmm. a team one in the north and one in the south to, to receive the award and Mount Anthony was the, was the, the, the team that was outstanding okay. in, in all those particular areas uh, Mm -hmm. that we evaluated them on and so yeah. that was awarded to Mount Anthony. Congratulations to them. Okay. Do you have a question back there? I have something. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Lori from so I just wanted to ask you if you collected the same data on those students that um, uh, may still want to pursue secondary education but may have challenges. Um, you had mentioned that a percentage of students went on to secondary education and things like that, and I just didn't know if you had collected any of the data regarding like our free and reduced versus our regular students versus special needs no, by any chance. I, I have I haven't done that. Okay, no. I was just curious. Okay, thank you. But uh, I can say that some of these students are in special education. Many of them are on free reduced lunch. Yeah, I just was I mean, wondering whether the them. success was as high. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Tim. Uh, Leon, do you have a question? Did we have included in this in a, uh, the graduation rate for years along that line? I think last time you, you added the graduation rate. In this, I don't see them here this time. Uh, 
on here. I've never put the graduation rate. That usually oh. comes out when we do the testing and AYP. Okay, because that was tied into I, that. Then that question, I won't ask it yeah. along that line. I'll well, we, that. we know that it's around 80, 80 percent, yeah. 79, around, 80, 80, it's right around anywhere 80%. between, uh, I'd say, 79 and 82 percent for four years. But that was Remember. a question of between the yes. state and what we were doing, and I, yeah. I don't know that we ever yeah. resolved that Five issue. Five years. If you do go more than four years, then of course it goes up because any student that chooses to stay um, because of, of um, a special needs student, say, or and they would actually put them as a dropout, even though they'll they could most possibly uh, graduate. Okay. So very good. And then the last comment that I wanted to make in, in in referring to Tim, there is and there is people out there that, in all fairness to the people that that have software that does this type of stuff. We chose right. not to do it. There is, but what okay. I've, because I did research around that and you have to provide them with all the information that, what's hard is finding where the student is. Right, I wanted Tim to, address. to realize so that. So you've got to give them all the numbers, you've got to right. give them all the email. Once you've done that, once you find that, then we have to go search them on Facebook. I mean, we really work hard to find those students. Right. So, I mean, I figure if we've already found the information, we can make the call and save five thousand dollars. So, very good. Okay, thank you, Tim Payne. Oh, what's that? Can I? Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Sure. Yeah, first, let me apologize for uh, being late. I was at the panel board. Meeting. Did you discuss the Burn Burton hockey issue? No, no, no we didn't. Um, this would probably be a good time to address it. Uh, you know that the athletic director um, asked. Uh, for permission uh, last month and for I think there's a number of families that, and I don't know what two. the right there's two. two so you know we've done some research into it, it we have we really have no objection to it uh, it seems the authorization is with the principal but uh, we felt that because it was brought to the attention of the board last month before uh, the principal would sign off on that we needed to bring that to you doesn't seem to be any insurance issues for us or the, the discussion with our school attorney you know there's always liability issues but this isn't really going to have any effect so I wanted to bring it to your attention that the principal is going to sign if it's not too late for those but we uh, we we felt uh, Sue and I after we had that discussion we felt we shouldn't do that without bringing it back to you first since it was discussed last month thank you does anybody have any questions on that I Ed? I think last the last meeting was a question about what a would the practice schedule interfere. We checked that and it wouldn't. Yeah. Very little time, like ten okay. minutes one day yeah. a week. Is the yeah. coach one morning a week practice, but in a time that it will be over that we think that they will be back in time. Mm -hmm. And there's probably a minimal of early releases, no more than uh, impact uh, okay. any of other sports. Yeah. Only one early morning practice there, a week. Are there any other questions? Very good. I think we just uh, give you that responsibility, Sue. And okay. Thank you very much. Do you know much. where the forms are? Uh, maybe Tim has them, I'm assuming. I'll yeah. check. We'll get something. I'll call her tomorrow, though. I, I'm sure. Tim, did I understand you correctly? You have no, no report? Oh, I have a report. Okay, I'm ready. No for comment it. for this. So, um, <laughs> The, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, we had a, uh, a dance last Friday at the middle school. We have a dance every month. Uh, we had 237 kids show up. Uh, I think it's, uh, I just wanted to thank the parents who come out and chaperone that. We had about a dozen parents. Uh, team Delta, which is a 7-8 team, uh, sponsored the dance, so they were responsible for getting adult supervision. Um, we opened the gym. Uh, we have a dance floor open in the cafeteria with the DJ. Uh, no slow dancing, none of that silliness for the seventh and eighth graders. Uh, and we had a, it was a nice evening and well attended. So it's it's a good place to see kids hanging out on a Friday evening instead of you know other places they could be. Uh, tomorrow is the end of the trimester. Uh, the middle school runs on a trimester system, so we'll be finishing that up tomorrow, which means report cards will be uh, arriving during the Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, hopefully that doesn't ruin too many holidays for kids. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted folks to know is we have a half day this Friday. Uh, it's an in-service for teachers and students are released at 11 o'clock. Uh, thanks to Maureen O'Neill and the Abbey Group, we will be providing lunch for kids prior to them being released. This is something that Maureen is really passionate about. 
uh, and just want to make sure kiddos have a good lunch before, or at least the opportunity to have a good lunch before they um, break for an early uh, start to the weekend. So share that with folks. Tim. And there is, a, um, my apologies, there is a, uh, an automatic phone call message that would be going home to families in the middle <laughs> school to let them know in case you have folks calling you up and saying, why is Tim Payne calling me again? Yeah, that was my question. Do we, you know, how do we let the parents know that their kid's coming home early? Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions for Tim? We can move on then. Uh, student representative. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to talk about is the dance that we had about a week and a half ago. It, people weren't really sure what to expect going into it, but um, I think the students had a lot of fun and it was really successful. Um, it was different from past dances, but different in a good way for sure. And I think the students that went definitely had a really good time. And I think they're going to share that with the students who didn't go because they weren't sure what to expect. And I think that um, future dances will be successful in much the same way. We'll have another one in January. It went really well. Yeah. It was very impressive. You said it was different from past dances. Can you? Explain that for all the old um, characters sitting here. It was much more appropriate dancing, and people had a lot of fun just like dancing with like groups of friends and um, just uh, like uh, <laughs> lack of words. Um, it, was, it, was, it was much better. <laughs> they were appropriate. I got Everything the idea. was appropriate, but at the same time, they seemed to be having a great time. Yeah. And they even did the hokey pokey, and everyone really yeah, enjoyed that. That, that was like, I didn't expect to see you guys doing the hokey pokey. They were doing the twist. They yep. were like, it was just like, it was a dance from 15 years ago. It was great. Everyone really liked it that went. So yeah. it was definitely really good. And then we also had the blood drive um, around the same time, and that was really successful too. We ha got more people to do it this year than we did the year before, which was the goal. And it, was, it went really smoothly, it set, got set up well, everyone who donated blood did a really nice job, and it was um, really great to see the people participating in that at the school. And then the play this weekend is The Wizard of Oz. It starts tomorrow, actually, and it goes through Saturday night. And so everyone's getting ready for that at the school, and they're all really excited. And I do want to say, though, it's sold out. Yeah. Every single... Um uh, performance is totally sold out every single seat. Great. So I just want to announce that because we've, we're continuing to get calls. And then we also had the volleyball tournament last week and that went really well. The teacher team won so the students were a little bit upset about that because the teachers <laughs> beat them all but um, it was it was really successful and they everyone had a really good time with that too. Very good, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Well, we can move on then to uh, uh, committee reports. Ag, uh, Nathan? Yes, at the last meeting, uh, we had a report from, uh, I don't know the woman's name, but she comes from some state agency. And <clears throat> as this committee, is, as the agricultural program is developing, it was obvious that there were many different constituent parts of this program, and it was hard to pull it all together. And she managed to have all the different constituents of this program listed mm -hmm. and what their responsibilities are and what time of the year their responsibilities should take place. And it seemed like an extraordinarily helpful uh, mechanism for this committee to be able to kind of get its grip on the whole agricultural program. So I'm very optimistic about the future of the program. Right. Anybody else? I, I wasn't there. Dave, were you there? I was there, yep. Any, um, anything to add? Well, uh, I guess the other thing that I recall was a conversation uh, Mr. Payne helped facilitate uh, in terms of thinking about the, the makeup of the committee, the, the appropriate uh, makeup of the committee, making sure that there was a representative from you know, each constituency. So, and I think that's a conversation we'll continue to have. Okay. And you're still working on guidelines and parameters and stuff. Good. You can move on and educate. Any questions for either anybody? Okay. Education, Dave, again. Yeah, I think I jumped the gun earlier. No, you did not at all. I just, is there anything else you wanted to add? No, I think what I said earlier covered the two, uh, the two courses. Mm -hmm. And um, we, I guess we're going to uh, accept those. Yes. We, we, we have been to accepted in the consent agenda, so we're, it, we're all set. Okay. Yeah. We're all set. We're done. 
Very finance. good, thank you. Uh, finance, no report. We will schedule a meeting. Everybody obviously would is uh, welcome to come to it, and it will be a meeting that will set the type of parameters that we'll be passing on to the business office in terms of drawing up the budget for the for the uh, for the coming fiscal year. Superintendent's report. You missed one. Maybe I talked too much. What? Policy. Oh, I thought I could get away with all that. <laughs> We're not there yet. You're not there. <laughs> They're down farther. Okay. They're down farther. <laughs> Policy wasn't in the packet. Not coming to it in the packet. My, my guess is at least three of you have seen this before. <laughs> uh, but, and I apologize that uh, that fact to you, but I think there's enough of you here that haven't seen it that I'd like to re review it with you. And mainly for these three reasons. Uh, one, we're entering negotiations. I think it's important what uh, impact this report could have on our thoughts in negotiations. I think the other uh, thing that's important to note is we're going to be entering a legislative session uh, not too long from now, and this could help in your discussions with our legislators as uh, there will be discussions that will impact education. And the third thing, we're in our budget planning season and getting very close to where we're going to be presenting budgets. So. This is an 18-minute video, which I'm not going to have you watch. <laughs> I've taken slides from the video that I think are crucial for us to see. There's a link to the video at the end that you can watch on your own, but I'll go over some highlights. Tim, do we have a... Oh, yes. you're going to be my clicker? Thank you. Get out of your way. And, and I'll, I'll be... So the first slide. No surprise here. In the time period that this chart shows, you can see the escalating costs of expenditure, and these are Vermont numbers. I should say up front that what we're working at, the supervisory union, we're going to break this down, future meeting, for where these statistics are for each individual school district. So, in, uh, and I'll, let me point this out front. One problem, though, this came, some of you went to the Regional School Board Association meeting. This is a joint report from the Vermont School Board Association and the Vermont Superintendents Association. One flaw that I see in the report is, as we go through the charts, we're not going to see consistent year snapshots. So I, I think one of the problems with the statistics is we're not always looking at the same window. So we should bear that in mind. But there is no question that the cost for full-time equivalent students is escalating. Next, Tim, please. Yet. Some of you might have already known this statistic. The average daily membership of uh, K through 12 students in the state of Vermont has dropped from a high of 103,000 in 1997 to currently 82,523. And that's for the entire state of Vermont. Yep. Um, you can see this. This is a snapshot of what our our per enrolled student expenditure is in comparison to other New England states and to the national average. And uh, for a number of reasons, could be our size, could be the size of our student enrollment, uh, we have one of the highest expenditures, uh, and certainly the highest in New England. Next. To anybody who's been around education, this, this pie chart should not be any surprise to anyone. 80% of our costs in running education goes to salary and benefits, and that You'll see that model just about in every school system. The only time you see a variation, uh, like at the Career Development Center, it's more like a 65-35 split because they buy more things, more materials going to their educational process. Next. Compare this to where student enrollment has gone in Vermont. Uh, 2004 to 2014, number of teachers and paraeducators has basically remained consistent. But this is one of those somewhat deceiving charts. If you go back and look at the student enrollment chart, it goes back to 97. It shows the drop from 97 to current. 
well, this is only a 10 year window, so it's not a true comparison. Okay. Uh, Vermont enjoys one of the <laughs> lowest student uh, teacher ratios uh, in the country, if not the lowest, lowest in New England. Uh, do not confuse by any means, and we, you know, we have Tim and Sue here, I'm sure you have very few, if any, classes with 9.9 .9 students to your teachers. That's right. It's all educators are into this mix, so your, your specialists are into this mix too. Not, not technicians, but inclusion specialists, special education teachers, they're into this mix, so that affects that ratio. So you, you won't necessarily find nine students sitting in a class with one teacher. Thanks. But it is important to note that every state is looking at the snapshot the same way, and we do have one of the lowest ratios, which continues to decline. It was 10.92 down to 9.9. Next. Yet at the same time, other than for Maine, Vermont pays the lowest average salary in New England, and we're below the national average. Now, one might argue that you know it's an average salary, and there are a number of reasons that could go into that. We could have a very young teaching staff on average in Vermont. Uh, it might not necessarily be a reflection of the salaries grids and our teacher contracts. Uh, I think it's probably always a combination of, of, of both, but, um, and it could also, uh, it does impact us. Uh, it, ask your principals, it does impact us when we're trying to hire uh, staff, particularly in some difficult to fill positions. Next. Uh, this goes back to that 80-20 split, salary first, first benefits. Uh, our insurance plans are expensive. Uh, that, these are again Vermont averages, but it's very close to what it is here in our, our school districts and our supervisory union, and those figures will be coming at, at the next meeting after we've had this. Because my first question when I see statistics like this, okay, it's great to see what the Vermont averages are, but what is the local impact, and that's what we're working on. Thanks. Uh, you can see this is uh, free and reduced lunch, and, and this is important for some future slides that we're going to have later on in this presentation, that uh, you can see how this is escalated. I am not aware, but I, I, I won't stand on this statement. It's something that we're looking into. Has the criteria changed from 2002 to 2013, or is this really uh, the increase in free and reduced lunch, or was the you know, the benchmark change. Now, we have districts in our, our supervisory union that have lower than that, and we have some that are double from that. So, but this is, again, the Vermont average. Next. Uh, the increasing percentage of special education versus general education costs. Again, uh, it's not a consistent time shot, and it's also, you know, not uh, consistent as far as grids, but this is not my presentation. This is highlights from their presentation that I think all school board members should see. But um, you, and, and one question that I've had in other presentations to boards, and I've presented this to other boards that have said, and I don't know this answer, because they dispute the expenditure they feel is actually higher, because we don't know if this includes federal funds. Because remember, when we do our budgets, we don't, our budget is one thing, our total expenditure is a different amount because of the revenue stream from a different location. So that's something that I do have to research more. Next. One school board association, one your tenant association, feels this is important, especially if you're going to be having discussions with your legislators about the impact of some of these unfunded mandates and the impact that it's had on our budgets. And as you know, one of the biggest ones, I'm not necessarily the Mount Anthony Union District, but for many of our other districts, the districts that feed you, universal pre-K is going to have a significant budget impact. And that is supposed to take place uh, this July, so you know, for the next school year, the budget that we're planning right now. And uh, those numbers are starting to come together, and I'm very concerned. Next. So what does this tell us? Well, I think it depends who's trying to drive the conversation. Clearly from the meetings I've went to, and this should be no surprise to anybody in this room, 
I feel the agency of education is and is trying to drive a discussion towards consolidation, and so isn't many of uh, other politicians in Montpelier. We'll, we'll leave it at that. So this is comparing Vermont to other New England states for the size of our districts and the size of our supervisory unions. And particularly if you look at in blue, you'll see that it, Vermont um, has many smaller districts. Um, so the, the, the Secretary of Education, I keep calling her, I think I've called her the Commissioner a couple of times, I'm sorry, Secretary of Education, um, to point out, this, we're different in Southwest Vermont. We're, we're pretty good size. But she gave examples of high schools with less than 100 students in it, part of Vermont, and, and, and even further decline in enrollment. This, this part of the state is not declining enrollment-wise as rapidly um, as some others. But if you're trying to drive the discussion towards consolidation or to try and save costs, this would be a chart that you're going to see because it's, you know, if you believe in the economy of scale. Thanks. Well, this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody who's a uh, property tax owner and paying taxes. You'll see that the percentage coming from the general fund to education is in decline and the percentage coming from property tax is increasing. And that's putting pressure that's driving, again, the same conversations that we've been talking about. Consolidation, where can we save money, declining enrollment. Next. Uh, but then we can talk about, is there, is there the, the ability to pay? Vermont, from this chart, other than Maine, has the lowest medium household income. And in many of our districts, it's lower, and that's the number that we're working on. We only currently have per capita income, which is, is much lower than that. I believe the per capita income you need the individual, not the family, for Bennington is about $17,000. So. Um, and the impact on your personal income for education is felt higher in Vermont than any other New England state. So according to this, we're spending, uh, a Vermonter is spending more of their income on education than any other individual in any other New England state. Uh, we can skip this, this I shall left that out. It's, you can read it in your quote, go ahead, Tim. All right. So here should be a source of pride. 92%, and this kind of goes with what Principal McGuire was saying earlier, 92% of students in Ron are graduating within four years. And that, that's, you know, compared to the other states there, um, yeah, that's a good statistic. But it's not being left alone. Some of the questions being asked is, when you have a high graduation line, rate like that, is our bar too low? And that's something that we're going to have to look at. That, that was, that's pretty much a quote from the Secretary of Education at the regional meetings is, are we too low? I mean, is our bar too low? Is that one reason we're so successful? Or are we really doing a great job? Now, in some of the national test models that I see, I, I think we're doing a really great job, but we got to make sure of that if we're going to stand behind that stage next. Uh, not a surprise kind of goes to, we had a question from the audience that you'll see, again, state averages don't have these statistics for our Benny, greater Bennington area yet. Low-income students are less likely to graduate in four years. I don't think that's surprising. 95%, 70%. Next. Nationwide, that gap is shrinking according to their statistics. Next. The same Vermont, it's actually stagnant or slightly increasing the gap of uh, going to college, free and reduced lunch versus non free and reduced next. And again, this is not a statistic that really should surprise anybody. The least percentage of students who are going on post secondary are males, first generation, in other words, no one in their family has gone to college. And the highest percentage, females who have someone in their family who has gone to college. Next. This is why that statistic's important. 
Look at the income and difference uh, the, between the difference in income having a college degree, not having a college degree. What I find amazing, and again, had to make line, you know, line by line comparisons because you look, this is a 1965 to 2013, is adjusted for inflation. <coughs> that was a question in a pre previous presentation, right? but sobering statistic that income for high school graduates is on decline driving importance for uh, further career, technical, or a college uh, education. Thanks. So that's the condensed version. On the back page is the link. You can go to that and watch the YouTube video of the entire presentation. It's 18 minutes uh, long. My task now that I, I've given myself is to take this report and make it local so that we can have a better snapshot particularly for budget discussion and negotiations, and as you um, to have discussions with your legislators. And the last thing that I'll mention in my report, why that's important, I was at a legislative breakfast last week in uh, North Car uh, Clarendon, Vermont, and to a person, the senators and representatives gathered there, um, absolutely certain that the discussion of some type of consolidation for savings uh, will be on the legislative agenda again this coming season. Uh, they talked at length about what happened last year. Uh, general consensus was that it got to the Senate too late to allow um, lengthy debate and discussion and so it was rejected. It's, it's not going away. I'm not saying it's going to happen. What I am saying is it not going away. How you feel about it is time. It's time to have your have that discussion with your with your uh, representatives in Montpelier, uh, so that your feelings are known. And that's that's my report for this evening. There's a lot, there's a lot there, Jim. Yeah, there, there <laughs> is, and there's, there's going to be more. The the other report was, uh, which I will. Uh, it uh, it kind of mirrors some of this. Secretary Holcomb's report. I'll condense that even more and present that at, at a future meeting. She, her, a lot of her discussions are not quite as immediate. It's more long range. Specifically, the impact, and you know, and you have a, a, a principal retiring, and uh, the impact on the Vermont is seeing her charts of the longevity, the lack of longevity between superintendents uh, and principals. And so that brain drain of uh, talent that we can, and they, they cited uh, a district, uh, a supervisory union just east of us, Twin Valley, that has gone through four superintendents in five years. And was, in my opinion, uh, you know, hiring the right teacher and giving them the incentives to stay there, and then hiring the right principal and giving them the incentives that they want to make this a career and the longevity there, because that's how we're going to drive change in instruction. So that that needs to be part of our discussion too, because the not not here as much as in other parts of Vermont, what they're seeing is just the inability to hire top notch and keep them. Uh, it, it we're kind of an incubation area for many other um, um, states, and that that's that's going to have an impact. Jim, one, one thing that I know came up in one of those is the chart that shows the percentage of kids that go on to further education after they graduate. That's not in here, even though Vermont is high in terms right. of graduation rate. It's relatively low in terms of... Yes, she did. And, and uh, Se Secretary Holcomb pointed that out. And um, we have one of the lower percentages of students who are going on to further education, and we saw what that impact is on um, on uh, future earnings. She speculated, um, and I don't mean to speak for her, but you know, one of the things that we should look at is uh, does it relate to that lower bar, and we not we're not preparing enough students for college, or rigorously enough for college. Uh, that's one thought. The other is tied to the economic realities that we're seeing about Vermont incomes is college just becoming unattainable 
and unaffordable. And you know, my experience is always it's probably a, a mixture of both, but that's just speculation on my part, and we, we need to do the hard work of looking into what that is. But that is one of the other realities that, uh, that we have one of the lower levels of uh, going on to further education compared to other New England states and national exams. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. There's an awful lot to digest here. I'm sure that it'll be a precursor to other conversations, certainly in terms of budget and hiring and staffing and, and all those things that, that and, go and, into and So I will end with this, the staffing piece. We, we have a principal to replace. We are going to be putting a, um, uh, a search committee together. So I would like uh, from the board to recommend uh, three members from the board who would like to serve on that committee. We're going to do the same with some administrators, teachers, members of the public. The timeline that we're looking for is to uh, advertise the position by mid-December uh, with a closing date of mid-January um, and then begin interviews there for hire hopefully by early March so that uh, we can work out all the details. That's the timeline that we've worked out, so I, I would that. suggest yeah. that everyone interested contact you. Yeah, that and would if be there's fun. anyone from the public who's interested, contact me. Very good. We can we can move on then. I, Dave pointed out to me, and I apologize, I thought that the two uh, courses, or you know, the two uh, courses that uh, Sue had recommended we're on the consent agenda. They are not on the consent agenda. So I need a, a motion to approve those two courses. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Raise your hands. Thank you very much. Dave, did I cover everything this time? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. I have no other report except for the remind those people on the finance committee. I will be in touch with them to get a convenient time and let the rest of the board know when we will start those meetings in preparation for the for the budget. Leon? On the, your report, in terms of the chair's report, I just wanted to report on, since the superintendent just got done and given all these good things out <coughs> here, uh, the net know that uh, SVSU was uh, completed an initial evaluation of the superintendent and uh, the results were in line and positive from the various groups that we solicited information from and we had a very high turnout of information 79 percent of the uh, surveys that were sent out came back and uh, having reviewed all that information just uh, last night we made a an offer to hire the superintendent on following the completion of his interim year with a, a two-year contract congratulations Thank you. Okay, we can now go on to Leon. Oh, that's <laughs> another Leon. Uh, th this is on the policies. There's two things here. The policy committee met, but these policies that are down here for adoption didn't get included in the packet. So it wouldn't be good to say, let's adopt them if we don't have them for you to review. Well, I'll be I sure that they're on the next. Right. The next that would be great. Would you just? Uh, they were not in the packet. They, I didn't see them. I couldn't pull them up. Uh, and did anyone else yeah, pull them up? Got them. You got them. Yeah. Yeah, I got. Them. I, mean, I, I have them, but I always assume that I get them. Yeah. But I don't know if everybody they else. Were in, did. In the I couldn't pull them up. They were, I couldn't yeah, find I, you. I don't you have them online. I don't have them online. No. Well, that's what I mean. Online, I couldn't get them. Okay. And so, okay. if you got the pack sent to you, you probably. Anyway, I will. Okay, we can do them next meeting. Okay, Leon, if you would just uh, double check with those things to, with Mary Lee just to be sure that she has them. Right, right. The, the policy committee did meet, and uh, as always, this is a wonderful thing to happen, and it probably a lot of people maybe saw one of the policies down, uh, had uh, an article in the paper written about it, and that was uh, the one public participation at board meetings. I would strongly urge everybody to read that and make sure that we understand it and that uh, the board chairs that we asked that all of the board chairs throughout the district uh, read and try to adhere to, to that, to the uh, public participation policy. We also uh, uh, talks, we, we table such a procedure, which is something that's gonna come up next time. We need an input from the high school and some other places on that. Uh, and we went through our uh, 
tracking sheet in terms of information and then we found out that uh, which we want to forward on to the education committee I think well between the middle school and the high school attendance need to be resolved in terms of that uh, coming to some consensus in terms of that policy and so that may need to go on to the education committee so we can look at what it is that we talked about the difference between the attendances at the high school and the middle school and just to remind everybody most of the questions a lot of the questions that come through the policies come from our feeding districts they want to know and understand what it is and how the students are being managed when they leave the elementary level at the high school and so they ask a lot of questions about policies and procedures which we take may take for granted but they want to know the, the nuts and bolts of them and that's where a lot of our questions come from so uh, next meeting will be December 1 I think that is and so everybody is welcome to attend Thank you. Right. Are there any other comments people wish to make? Dave? Sue, could yes, sir. this uh, document you gave us about how well our kids are doing, any way we can get that into the news? Yeah, it was in last year. But I don't see Derek here tonight, but he anybody. did an article about it last year, so I can talk to him again. Thank you. Ed? We're under other, right? Yes. Uh, just a short, small comment. At the last meeting, I asked our IT director to please zip up everything in a packet and make it one file so it could be downloaded quickly by those of us who want to read it online, and he did that, and I want to thank him publicly. I did. I want him to have too. <laughs> <laughs> he's not watching. <laughs> Were you able to open it? Yes. So mine won't open. Sometimes there are problems in opening it. I don't know. I know. Opened, I, yeah. you, it took you, a long time though. Yeah, it takes a, I don't know what it is. I had trouble opening it. I had to, in the browser window, I had to click on download. If and bring you, it down and, and bring, bring it down and, down and, then, and, click, then, and then click Then on open it. it and everything was fine. Okay. I had to get, Evelyn, is that her name? Jim from the office over there that showed me how to do that. <laughs> anyway, uh, are there any other things to be brought before this board? If not, um, our next meeting is December 17th. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Thank, Thank you all very much. Okay. Yeah.